He's mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Father. Awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory. Praise. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Glory to you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in this house. Oh, you're mighty God. You are more than enough. You are almighty God. Oh, we give you praise, Father. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, you're mighty God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Speak the word with me. Say this. I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Greater he is he who's in me than he who's in the world. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not below. Everything I put my hand to prospers and is blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Jesus set me free. Jesus made me whole. I can walk in love because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Turn me to Ephesians 5.1. Ephesians 5.1. Right after Galatians in the New Testament. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Visions 5.1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be ye therefore followers, say followers, followers, of God as dear children. Now this word followers in the Greek it literally is mimetes. It's where we get our word mimic from. And it means an imitator. You know how kids will imitate their parents. Kids don't do what you say, usually. They do what you do. So if you want to lead your kids to do a certain thing, don't be doing the thing you tell them not to do. Because they're going to do what you do. The scripture says, be you imitators of God even as dear children. In other words, in the same way that kids imitate their parents, we're to imitate God. Amen. So Thank we Lord. see the way God does a thing, then we're supposed to do it that same way. So God leads and directs us by the way he acts. And God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever exercised faith in him and believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came. He said, greater love has no man than this, than a man to lay down his life for his friends. Amen. And we should be willing to lay down our lives for Jesus Christ. Because he laid down his life for us. We, we need to love God so much. Thank you, Lord. We need to be lovers like God's lovers. Yes. Another scripture says, be kind one to another, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. In other words, we should walk in love with our fellow man. And we should let go of stuff. We should not hold grudges. That's right. We should let go of stuff. When should we let go? As soon as we realize we have an offense. Amen. We should refuse to pick up offenses. Yes. I've told people, I said, you can try to offend me, but it won't take. I refuse to take up an offense. Now, then I've had people try me with that, and I still refuse. I'm not asking you to offend me, try to offend me, but I, I, I'll still walk in love with you, even if you, even if you spit at me, whatever. You can try to offend me. If you do, I'm just going to walk in love. That's a choice I make. We get to choose those choices. The Bible, Jesus said, forgive other people. He said, as you stand praying in Mark 11, 25, talking about praying the prayer of faith. <laughs> He said, and as you stand praying, if you have aught against anybody, if you have anything against anybody, forgive them. Why? Because the Bible says faith worketh by love. 
So if we're not walking in love, our faith won't work. So we need to, we need to be forgivers. We need to not hold on to grudges if we want to be a child of God. Amen. We should be like our Father which is in heaven. That's what the Word says. It says, be like your Father which is in heaven. We need to be like God. Well, I'm not God. No, but Jesus is in us. That's right. Jesus is God and He's in us. Amen. And we have, if we'll put on the mind of Christ, we need to spend time in the Word of God and put on the mind of Christ. God, God put in our hearts and our minds, He put His ways. It's under a new covenant. It's a new and living way. Now God's put His ways in our hearts and our minds, and God leads us by our conscience. Yes. If your conscience offends you, you need to change some things. Mm -hmm. If your conscience offends you about doing something, don't do it. God leads and guides and directs us by our conscience. Okay? And so God said, Be ye therefore followers or imitators of God and dear, as dear children. And verse 2 says, And walk in love. I tell people that all the time. Walk in love. We used to have a lady that lived with us for a long time. And all the time she'd be hollering about somebody she wanted to get. I'd say, Walk in love. And then finally she got to a point where she'd start to say, she'd say Oh, I know. Walk in love. Walk in love. <laughs> That's what we need to do. Walk in love. Amen. People are not our problems. Right. We, have a, we have an adversary, the devil, he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's people. But against, uh, against uh, powers and, and spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, our enemy is not other people. It's the <laughs> demonic forces that are behind their words. Yes. I mean, the devil will use people to try to get to you. Mm -hmm. We just need to walk in faith. The Bible, James says, "Be submit, submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The way we resist the devil is the way Jesus did in the wilderness. He spoke the word every time the devil tempted him. He said, the word says, the word says, the word says. The Bible says that he left for a season. I've had people say, well, the devil keeps coming back at me. Well, he's going to you. Because he's our adversary. He's not, he's not going to give up. Don't you give up. Amen. Because the devil's not going to give up. Amen. He's going to be attacking you. That's his job. I tell people, well, the Bible says that's his job. Why are you shocked the devil's coming to bother you? Because that's his job. We just have a, a, we have a responsibility when we've done all to stand to keep on standing. We have to, have to continue to... Now, now, fortunately, our lifespans are short now. We want to live, most people want to live to be 70, 80 years old now. But we can live a lot longer than that. Because God's promised us long life. Amen. If we'll stand on those promises and do what the Word says, then God, God will lift us. He will strengthen us. For we can live a long, long time. I'm going to live a long time. I'm only 63 years old. I've got a long, long life ahead of me. I got the first part of my half, first half. Of, I call myself middle aged because I'm just 63. Yep. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So we need to be walking in love because Christ, as Christ loved us. We need to be imitating God. We need to be kind one to another and forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. I had one guy said, well, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Well, the Bible says God forgives and he forgets. So when God forgives you, he forgets. How can God forget? Because he's God. Right. He can choose to forget. Now, God says... He forgives and he forgives. So we should forgive and we should forget. We should be imitators of God. Amen. Amen. We should walk in love with other people. Yes. Yes. We should refuse to hold on to grudges. That's right. We should just refuse. Now, I can refuse to do that. You can refuse to do that. How can we do it? It's because Christ is in us, enabling us to do what he commands us to do. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. We can do what God says we can do. Amen. We can be who God says we can be. We can have what God says we can have. We can walk as a child of God, an heir of God, and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, those who follow me, those who, those who believe in me, he said, the same works that I do, can they do also. And the most important things Jesus did 
was not the miracles. I mean, they were great, but that wasn't the main thing. He lived a pure and holy life without sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God through him. Amen. It's through Jesus Christ, his blood, that cleanses us from all unrighteousness that we can walk a pure and holy life without sin. Amen. So I don't have to sin. I don't have to but sin. But if I do sin, if I, do. I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ. And if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Yes. That's, Father, forgive me. I don't want to do that anymore. Help me never to do that again. And then well, you, he forgives you and he breaks the power of that in your life. Amen. But you have to keep standing. Yeah. You have to keep fighting the good fight of faith. You have to hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, for he is faithful to promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Thank you, Father. First Corinthians chapter 13. Start with verse 1. Now, First Corinthians chapter 12 talks about the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And it's a profitable chapter. And then chapter 14 talks about proper speaking in the church, proper order in the church. First thir verse chapter 13, we call the love chapter. Have you, ever, have you noticed we're on a love theme today, right? Really? <laughs> Our songs were on love, right? Yes. And though I speak with tongues of, of men and of angels and have not charity. Now this charity is agape. It's, most places it's translated love. So it's talking about the God kind of love. It's not the human kind of love. It's the God kind of love, agape. And though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not agape love. I become as a sounding brass or a, trip, a, t a tinkling cymbal. In other words, I don't accomplish anything, even if I speak in tongues. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, you know, sometimes in chapter 14 it says, when you speak in tongues, no man understands you, but you're speaking to God. And so only God understands us. That's called prayer. When we're speaking in something to God. That's called prayer, okay? Amen. When we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive a prayer language of tongues. Okay? He said, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love or charity, I'm nothing. In other words, if you don't have love, even if you have great faith, if you're not walking in love, it won't accomplish, great faith will not accomplish you anything because faith won't work without love. That's right. Well, a lot of years ago, I, I, I had, a, I had a, a relative that he had done some evil things, and uh, I, I hated him. I hated this guy. I hated him. Say hate. Amen. Hate's like you, you would kill him if you could. <laughs> and I prayed for him. I said, God, you said in your word, vengeance is mine. Say, Lord, take him out. That's what I prayed to God. <laughs> so anyhow, and that's how I prayed for him. But anyhow, so, so one day I got sick. I got sick and I got, and I, I was a faith guy, so I knew how to stand in faith to receive my healing. I'd always receive my healing. But this time I couldn't receive my healing. I got sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Finally, I called out to God because I, I thought I was going to die. I mean, you get so sick, you could die. And so I was getting sick like that. I thought I was going to die. So I said, God, what's wrong? Because I knew I was standing in faith. I had all faith for that, for healing. So I said, God, what's wrong? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you hate such and such, this guy. He said, as long as you hate him, your faith won't work. You can't be healed. I, got, I got, had to change that day. That day I said, okay, Lord, I'll pray different for him. So I started that day to praying for him, for God to draw him to himself, for God to deliver him, for God to set him free, God to save his soul. And that day I got totally healed by the power of God. That day. That's all that was holding my faith back. Was that unforgiveness towards That's that guy. Right. That hatred towards that guy. Unforgiveness is hatred. In 1 John it says, if you hate your brother, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in them. So we need to walk in love with all people. Jesus talked about you should love your brother. And the Pharisee says, well, who is my brother? Now, they despise the Samaritans. So Jesus began to tell them a story, a parable, 
about these guys who were Jewish people who were even priests and rabbis. And there was this guy laying on the ground, and he was hurting. He'd been beat up. And the other guys, they just walked on the other side of the street. They didn't want anything to do with him. But this Samaritan, now they despised Samaritans. They were like half-breeds. It was even illegal for him to even speak to a Samaritan as a Jewish person. And so, so this Samaritan came to this man, and he, he helped him, and he treated him. He even took him to a hotel and gave them money to take care of him. He said, if you, if, he, if you spend more than this, I'll be back to pay you. And he said, who was the neighbor to that man? Was it the high priest? Was it the Jewish people? Who was the, the neighbor to that man? Well, of course, it was a Samaritan. So he taught him that lesson. Everybody is our neighbor. We need to walk in love with every person, whether they're a good person, whether they're an evil person. We just need to walk in love with them. We need to not be hating on people. We need not be taking up offenses against anybody. That's right. Hallelujah. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity or love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity or love, it profits me. It doesn't matter what I do. I mean, there's a lot of people that are good people that do not walk in the love of God. I mean, they, they may be charitable. They may do some good things, but if they don't have the love of God in their life, it doesn't profit them a thing. But I do these good things. I have an evil heart, but I do these good things to be seen of men. You see, if I do something to be seen of men, it doesn't profit me anything. That's right. Right? Yes. Charity agape, love suffereth long and is kind. It's kind. Say it's kind. Uh -huh. Love is kind. Agape envieth not. In other words, it doesn't envy other people. You know, you see somebody get something, you think, man, I want that. That's not right that he got that, and I didn't get that. It's not right that they got that. I should have that. We shouldn't be like that. We should be happy for them. Amen. We should, be, we should rejoice with those that rejoice. Don't get upset because somebody else got something that you don't have. Just rejoice that they got it. Thank you, Father. It envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. In other words, if you're walking in love, you won't be puffed up. Oh, look who I am. Look what I've done. I wrote a book on miracles, and I've got a lot of miracles. But I didn't write that to lift us up. I lift, wrote that so other people could see the miracle-working power of God if they would, would submit to God in certain areas if they walk in faith in certain areas, they can have miracles too because God's no respecter of persons. Amen. That's why I wrote that book. So, so we don't lift ourselves up. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives more and more and more grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Yes. Let him lift you up. Amen. God lifted up Joshua like he lifted up Moses. When he made Joshua leader over the people, he said, I'm going to lift you up by these miracles that I'm going to use through you. So he had, he had the, the Jordan River split, just like he did the Red Sea with Moses, and they walked across on dry ground. Amen. And he, God lifted him up by the miracle. The Lord, miraculous. Yes. He did, but he was not, he still stayed humble. We must stay humble if God uses us in mighty things. Amen. We must stay humble because otherwise God will never ever use us again. So always stay humble before the Lord and let Him lift you up. Obey God in everything. Love does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Is not easily provoked. You know, some people wear their feelings on their sleeves, they got a chip on their shoulder, they're easily provoked. They look to, uh, for a way to take offense. Love doesn't do that. Love looks for a way to let it go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, they I used to get upset when somebody was like, in the drive, when I was driving there, you know, I'd get upset. Tom used to too. And I, I, I'd get upset with some other drivers. And now, if a, if a truck, semi-truck runs me off the road, I just say, well, he just probably wasn't paying attention. Bless him, Lord. That's what I do. Because I'm 
trying to do what the Word says to do. I'm trying to not take offense to stuff. I'm trying to let stuff go. I'm trying to not be bitter against people. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to do that, folks. Yes. I'm, I'm still working on it. We, we, need, we work on it all our life. We never quit working on it. We keep trying to perfect, let God perfect us. In, first, in John chapter 15, Jesus talks about God as a husband. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. My father is the husband. And he said, my father, if a, if a branch bears fruit, that's, that's doing good works and we bear fruit. He said, he will prune off the bad stuff so we'll bear more fruit. So let God cut stuff off your life that you need to get cut off your Amen. life. Amen. And grow up into the Lord that you may bear more fruit. That you may be fruitful in this life. I want to grow in God. Amen. I'm just getting started. Amen. I'm just getting started. I'm 62, three years old, and I'm just getting started. I've got a long ways to go, folks. I want to, I want to live a long, long life where I can do a lot of stuff for God. I'm still, I'm just getting started. I've got a lot more to do for the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get what God wants me to get accomplished in this life. Amen. He's going to enable me to do it. He's going to give me the strength. He's going to lead me, guide me, direct me by the Spirit to do what He calls me to do. Love does not behave itself unseemly, does not seek her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. There's another scripture that says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are perfect, whatsoever things are honest, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So I personally, this is just me, I don't spend much time watching the news. Because it's, I call it the bad news. You know, it's, the news, it's bad yeah. stuff. It's all the bad stuff that's been happening. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because it, it gets more people to watch it, to, to do it that way. If they tell all the good stuff that's happening, people won't watch it. But if they tell all the wrecks and all the deaths and all that kind of stuff, people are drawn by that. If they had the race, you know the race car races? If there was never a wreck in a race car race, most people wouldn't watch it. That's right. So they got all these wrecks, people like to see the wrecks. That's it. I'm just telling you. Anyhow, we're drawn to that. Our flesh is drawn to those kind of things. But God wants us to, to seek what's good, the good things, and not think about evil things. Don't even think about evil things. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Beareth, love beareth all things, believeth all things, rejoiceth in all things. Rejoiceth in all things. Hopeth all things, endureth all things, and love and charity never faileth. It never will fail you. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there should be knowledge, it shall vanish away. There's people that use this to talk about all the gifts of the Holy Ghost. These things were all done away with when the scriptures were canonized. That's a lie. This is not talking about when the scriptures got canonized. It's talking about when Jesus comes back, all these things are going to be, these things that are in part will be done away with. Yeah. No, no. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when he, when that which is perfect is come, it's not, that which is perfect is not talking about the scriptures. It's talking about when Jesus comes back. Yes. Because then it says we'll see him face to face. Yeah. And that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, though I was a child, but when that became, when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass dark, but then face to face. Then when Jesus comes back, we'll see him face to face. Now we just we just don't see everything clearly. But when we grow grow in grace, when we grow up in God, we see from grace to grace, from one degree of enlightenment to another, we grow up into the image of Christ ourselves. Thank you, Lord. We grow up into the image of Jesus Christ. We, we as though look in a, in a glass or in a mirror, we see things darkly now, but we grow in grace. Yes. Where we see things more and more clear. Have you ever noticed it? Like, we don't have any lights on here in the church. So we can't see real good, but you can see kind of good. But if I turn all the lights off, you won't be able to see much, right? Probably not. 
But if I turn a lot more lights on, you can even see like even the, the dust is floating. You ever seen sunlight go into a window and you see all the dust particles? Mm -hmm. You think, wow, I can't believe there's that much dust. Well, now you can't see it much, right? Because there's not that much light. The more enlightenment you get of the things of God, the more clearly you see everything else of the things of God. Amen. The more revelation you get of the Word, the more clearly you see all the rest of it. When you get one revelation of, a word, of the Word of God, God, it enlightens you to all the rest of the Word of God. <coughs> we see it more and more and more clearly. So I'll read something that I, have, that I maybe haven't understood for, before. And I'll read it again, and all, all of a sudden I understand it. I read a man's book when I was young. His name, it was called Watchman, Watchman Nee, a, a book he wrote. And I, it was really complicated. I thought, this is pretty deep stuff. Later on, after I got more knowledge and understanding, I read it, and I thought, this is pretty simple stuff. <laughs> you see, it was hard when I didn't have as much understanding, but it was much simpler when I had more understanding. I thought, well, that's kind of simple stuff. You see, when we get more enlightenment, we get more and more knowledge and understanding, it enlightens us to where we can see things more clear. Amen. We should, Christians, should be the smartest people in the world because we have the knowledge of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We have the life of God in us to enlighten us, to show us the truth of God's word. Not only his word, but we can understand everything in the world better. Amen. Presidents should be having spiritual people that really have a spiritual enlightenment to help them direct them. But they're God, most of them are godless. So they don't really care about godly counsel. Godly counsel is the greatest counsel. Amen. True godly counsel. Thank you, Lord. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. Now abideth or stays faith, hope, and charity, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is agape love. The love of God, that's the greatest. Why is that greater than faith? Because faith worketh by love. Why is that greater than hope? Because without love, there is no hope. So the greatest is love. The greatest of everything is love. Jesus said, man, come to Jesus. And he said, now, he was a Pharisee. He said, to Jesus, he said, he said, tell me, Lord, tell me, Master, tell me, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, the greatest commandment is this, to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, everything you are, love God above everything else. And he said, he said the second is like unto it, love your fellow man as yourself. He said, upon these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Upon those two commandments hang all. Of them. Notice, if we walk in love every day with God and our fellow man, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. So the love of God is to keep his commandments. And the love of our fellow man is to help us not to covet what our fellow man has. Not to want other, the other people's stuff. Amen. Want to want, not to want other, other men's wives or other or other women's husbands. We're not to covet other people's stuff. We're, we want to get our own stuff and God let God help us to get that stuff on ourselves and don't be coveting other people's stuff. Really, we shouldn't be coveting stuff. We should be coveting to walk in love. We should be coveting the gifts of the Holy Ghost. We should yes. covet the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be big in the Spirit, not in the flesh. We should, we should be believing God for extra so we can be givers. We should live to give, not give to live. Right. We should desire to be givers. Yeah. If we desire to be givers, God will get, help us get stuff so we can give. So be a blessing. The Bible says God blessed Abraham so he could be a blessing. Abraham was blessed not so he could be, have abundance, so he could bless other people. So he could be a blessing. One time, these two cities got overthrown. And his, his, his uh, uncle got captured, or his nephew got captured, Lot. And he, he, Lot, Abraham had enough men, fighting men, to go out and capture them back and overtake the city. The people of the city. Those people, see people that overrun their cities. He went back and he captured. And then they said, 
They just wanted to give him all the, the they wanted to give him all the spoil. He said, I don't want to take that. He said, I'll give a tenth to God of that, to, to give it to Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. He said, but the rest, he said, you guys kid, he, he said, because I don't want anybody to say that man made me rich. He said, God made me rich. God made him rich so he could be a blessing. God wants to bless us so we can be a blessing. I used to, I used to have this attitude that if I had just enough to get by, then that was good enough. And that was my attitude. And I, I, Kathy, Kathy and I were sitting at the Walmart here in Excelsior one time. And we had an old ratty car. How much did I pay for that car, Kathy? $150. $150 I paid for it. <laughs> you don't get much car for $150, bucks, but it did run. But anyhow, it was so bad, it was so rusted out, that Kathy took a can of spray paint, and she spray painted it to make it look like it was a camouflage car. Yeah. Like it was supposed to look like that. It had rust all over it. It had rust all over it. And so we were sitting in Walmart one day, and she was looking around, and she said to me, she said, Mike, everybody must be rich. And I said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, look at all these cars. Everybody has nice cars. And here we are in this rust bucket. Everybody must be rich. And I told her, well, we've got enough to get by, and that's good enough. And I had that attitude. If I've got enough to get by, that's good enough. But then one time, we, 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 were, we, were, we, were just getting, we just had enough to get by. And that's all I believed God for, just enough to get by. We had a friend that they were, they were about to file bankruptcy and they were hurting. And I, 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 I was upset because I, I felt like I should give them some money, but I had no money extra because we had just enough to get by. And so, so I just prayed to God. I said, I was like weeping. I prayed to God. I said, God, I'm upset because I don't have any extra money to, to give them. And the Lord spoke to me. He said this, you've been selfish. And that shocked me when the Lord told me. I've been something because I was being humble. You now I was being humble. I thought I'm being humble, you know. I'm just, I had, I, and he said, your problem is you've only been thinking about yourself. And that, that kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> so I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, you've just been believing me for just enough to get by. So that's all you have. He said, you need to start believing me for more than enough so you can be a blessing to other people. And I had to repent from that. I had, that day I repented of that. I said, Father, forgive me. Help me, Lord, to have more than enough all the time where I can always be a blessing. And from that day forth, we always had more than enough. Amen. We're not millionaires, but we've always had extra money to be able to give to every good word. Paul said, you should, have, you should believe God for, for enough that you might have extra for every good work. He said, give a little and you'll give a little, but give a lot and you'll give a lot. You'll get a lot. Because according, there's a principle in the word of God, a giving and receiving. So if we give a little, we get a little. If we give a lot, we get a lot. So we, Kathy and I are extravagant givers. I mean, we give as the Lord directs us to give, but we, we give a lot. I mean, I don't even claim how much I give on my taxes because they will audit me if I do that. Because I give such a high percent, I give way over 10%. I think last year I gave like almost 30% of my income. Last year, and, and if I if I put that down, they would like audit me. I don't want to get audited. I already got a little bit back. But anyhow, we need to be we need to be givers, as God directs us to give. We need to be tithing. Tithe is the first ten percent that we give. That we get, and we need to be giving. The offering is above the tithe. Amen. So so I believe that we should be givers. We should live to give. If we do that. God will just chase us down. The Bible says God will chase us down with blessings. Amen. He'll overtake us with blessings. He'll, now, now that's a good thing. That's a good thing to be blessed. Okay? But we need, we need to be, live to give. Hallelujah. <coughs> love gives. Amen. Jesus said, Greater love has no man than this, and a man to lay down his life for his friends. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. We need to be imitators of God as dear children. We, the Apostle Barnabas, he wrote, and I read that, I think, the last week or something. He wrote about the works of the light. And the works of the light included in that is to be generous in giving and not to think what you have is your, your own stuff, but to be, be unselfish in giving to other people. We need to be living to give. We need to think, this is God's money. Everything I have is really God's. 
So if God tells you to give a certain amount, and don't write a check that you don't have money in the bank for. I've heard people, give by faith. No, that's not giving by faith. You take, you don't give what you don't have. Come on. Don't bounce a check on us, you know. Come on. I've had that happen. Anybody. By faith, no. Don't give what you don't have. But be generous to give out of your abundance. Have what's extra you have. Hallelujah. God's good. God's merciful. God's gracious. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We need to be walking in love as Christ also has loved us, as God's also loved us. We need to not hold grudges. Turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Now Jesus is talking about end time stuff. <clears throat> 